This simple rod finish method can achieve a high quality finish with no need to rotate during cure. All you need to get started is your wrapped rod, flex coat rod finish kit, and a couple of boxes with V's cut into them to support your rod. Measure out equal portions of part A and B. For this spinning rod, Roger is measuring out three cc's of each part for a six cc mix. We are using high build formula. Mix your finish thoroughly. The mixture will be marbled, then cloudy, then marbled again, then clear. Mix it until it's crystal clear. I would recommend watching our video on measuring and mixing flex coat finish for a detailed look at this process. Pour the finish out onto a paper plate covered with aluminum foil. This will extend pot life and pop bubbles. You should start applying the flex coat finish on the guide foot tip end of the wrap. Starting at this end of the wrap allows the epoxy to soak into the thread down to the blank to fill the tunnels along the sides of the guides without trapping air. Roger has his signature triple band tag on this and he is using NCP thread which requires no added color preserver. For this first coat, it is important to get the flex coat finish on there so that it can soak in and saturate the thread. When you don't use color preserver on your wraps, you allow the epoxy to soak down to the blank which makes for the strongest, most longest lasting bond. While that finish soaks into the stripper guide, Roger moves on to the butt wrap. Just get it on there. Spread it around. Lengthwise strokes work well to spread the finish out on this big wrap. Keep your brush loaded with finish, but be careful to make a clean edge. This is a two coat process that will really look great in the end. Now Roger works down the rod in the same fashion as the larger stripper guide for these progressively smaller guides. Just saturate the threads and fill the tunnels. Once all the wraps are covered, Roger comes back to the first guide to make sure the threads are saturated and the tunnels are filled. If you don't put a thick saturating coat on or more than you need, the epoxy will be inhibited when soaking and saturating the thread. You can see here that the finish has saturated the thread, filled the tunnels, and is slightly leaching out at the base of the guide. This is a good indicator that the complete saturation is achieved. Okay, now Roger goes back down to the butt wrap and takes off the excess finish. He wipes it occasionally on the dry aluminum foil. You'll be able to see the texture of the thread through the thin finish. Since this is a two coat process, this first thin coat will allow us to fix any thread stick ups or any other anomalies between coats. With all the excess finish removed from the wraps and the guides upright, Roger sets his timer for 10 minutes. Now he can take off any excess finish that is sagged to the bottom of the wrap. Since this is such a thin coat, you shouldn't have too much sagging. You should repeat this for each time you clean off a sag, but if you have no sags, you're good to go for the rest of the cure. Now you can set the guides upright for the remainder of the cure time. Don't touch the finish on your rod until the cure time of 6 to 8 hours is achieved. You can use the leftover finish in your aluminum foil as an indicator. Though the flex coat obtains a full cure in 24 hours, you can recoat in 8 to 10. It's the next day and our first coat is cured to the touch. Roger wants to call attention to the finish still showing saturation of the tunnels, even though the coat is thin enough to see the texture of the thread. Now Roger uses a clean, sharp knife to shave off any thread fuzzies or stick-ups, being careful not to cut too deep. This will make for a great second and final coat. Measure and mix a fresh batch of flex coat just as before. Mix it thoroughly. Start applying the finish to the wrap, extending slightly over the edge of the first coat. Since this is the final coat, what you see is what you get. The finish will level itself, but since we are not rotating the rod during curing, it's important to cover the first coat. Not too thick and don't overwork the finish. Roger works his way down the rod, making sure everything is covered and nothing is out of sorts. Keep it clean and don't overdo it. You can clean up any mistakes on the rod blank with a paper towel and a little denatured alcohol. Then, as before, set the timer for 10 minutes with the guides in the upright position. After 10 minutes, clean any sags and repeat a few times until there are no more sags. Since these are thin coats, 
you shouldn't have too many sags. And if you wanted a third coat, it wouldn't hurt. Go right ahead. It's important to note that flex coat finish is much stronger than varnish. Now, with the guides upright, let the rod cure for 24 hours at room temperature. One more thing, for a much easier professional finish, the first equipment you should buy is a gear motor, and that will keep you from having to deal with any sags. This is how we do it.